Uh, Clear Track is our hydraulics modeling software. I mean, uh, it's uh, an ongoing and a growing effort in, in really being able to capture and, and add any, any new drilling capability. So when you look at, you know, deep water, for example, you have uh, a new managed pressure drilling technique called control mud level. So within a couple of months, we were able to add the control mud level simulation to our deep water capabilities in clear track. So in a very simple way, it helps you plan a well, look at, you know, your fluid density and, and equivalent circulating density to, you know, to make sure you stay within the safe drilling window. You could help, you know, use it to help look at hole cleaning and, and you know, and improve, you know, drilling performance. But at a very high level, it just continues to evolve as far as adding more features and capabilities in it. When you go there, I mean, the, the other part is how interactive the software is. So, you know, any hydraulic modeling software, you have, you know, it ties to the well. The well have different hole sizes, has different intervals, and every interval that you're drilling have a different drill strength. So if you do all the legwork up front, if you put all the hole sizes, all the intervals, and all the drilling strings, matter of displaying the data and showing the results to a customer, is basically as, is, is as simple as selecting something from a drop-down list. So, and the software have a lot of flags and warnings that will tell you, well, if you're doing something wrong, I mean, one thing that I've seen in, in, in a lot of legacy softwares in the industry is it won't stop you from making mistakes. So when, when you make a mistake in, you've input like 200 different data points in five different places, and now you're trying to go back and debug where actually I made an error. Well, ClearTrack really takes that, that guesswork out of this part. So when there is an error, it will immediately flag it. It will show you, well, this is where potentially the error is. You know, please go back and correct it. So it, again, it, it just increases your efficiency and minimizes that response time. Of course, being a fluids company, I mean, I'd say ClearTrack have the largest data set and, and you know, on, on database of different base fluids, different brines, uh, all the properties around uh, the brines and the base fluids. So things like uh, PVT data, which is how the volume of the fluid changes based on pressure and temperature, which of course affects density. Uh, other ideas around, uh, you know, thermal conductivity, heat capacity. So how the fluid tends to expand was, uh, was increasing temperature and a large database of you know fluid rheology under temperature and pressure weight so that that's the biggest you know differentiator really from running you know hydraulics without a lot of uh, hdhp rheology data and density data or able to or being able to incorporate that i mean a lot of times you'll see that you know when you compare your hydraulics to uh what we would call PWD uh, tools, which is like pressure while drilling tool, you'll be able to see that, you know, you're the two tenths and three tenths of a pound per gallon off, you're really kind of eliminating any of those errors as you start incorporating the HDHP rheology and everything else. Of course, you know, a big, you know, element of, of the calculations behind the scenes for any hydraulic software for, you know, really drilling activity in general and, and especially focusing on fluids will be the temperature model. So uh, temperature modeling in clear track has a lot of flexibility. So you could add, you could basically override the manual, the manual option and you could uh, use an automated uh, temperature model. So the, the automated temperature model would allow the rock and the fluid to basically balance the temperatures and, and and give you a more accurate pr uh, temperature prediction. So on the simulation side, uh, you know, now that you've put all your data in, now that you know the well schematics and the different drill strings, it's really as simple as going to just one window and, and going to a drop down menu of, I want this fluid with this drill string and that hole size, or changing different fluids in the same hole size and the drill string, you're not going back ever to the input again since it's already in place. You're still operating from that one screen and you're able to see not just your, you know, the fluid densities and pressures, but you're able to see your pore pressure, your frag gradient, 
and everything else related to the fluid, all the parameters that impact whole cleaning, like uh, cuttings concentration in the annulus, and how efficient are you transporting those cuttings all the way to surface. Uh, one nice feature around you know clear track is a picture of the wellbore itself on you know on the screen. You're able to customize that and see things like pressure of the wellbore, temperature of the wellbore, density of the fluid across the whole wellbore, or even identify where the risk zone is. Another piece is is there is more than one type of cuttings, one more than one shape of cuttings that you can allow. So that uh, gives you an idea of being able to customize the whole cleaning piece. So you're when you're you know using a PDC drill bit and, and seeing what the cuttings look like compared to using a rock bit and what that cut, what these cuttings are and again being able to customize the different outputs of the software. So one other feature of the software is what we call parametric analysis and in there you're able to you know put a set of parameters that you would use for drilling, like a wide range of parameters. And from there, you can let the software kind of help you optimize what is the optimum parameters as far as flow rate, as far as, you know, drilling rate, and uh, basically RPMs of the drill string itself to help, one, you know, clean the hole, two, of course, stay within that pressure window, and three, not exceed a certain pump pressure. One other feature of the software is, of course, you know, which is a key part of any drilling operation is uh, surge and swab modeling. So any drilling operation, you're going to either trip to change a bit or change a failed tool or just you're done drilling that section. It's time to run casing or run a liner, right? And you're either pulling the hole too fast that can, you know, create its own challenges of, you know, being below the pore pressure or running in the hole too fast and exceeding, you know, the surge pressure exceeding the frag radius. So uh, the software allows you to run different simulations, whether, you know, opt you know, fix a running speed, which is basically what a rig would do, or help you, you know, take over and automatically, you know, optimize that tripping speed to stay within that window. And we'll give you flags on, on where you're actually, you know, what your risk zone is. Is it on bottom? Is it the casing shoe? And we'll basically we'll give you a pipe tally of, okay, this is the pipe speed at this stand. Uh, one final feature of clear track is, you know, Again, building on the PVT data that's already embedded in the software in the database is looking at the synthetic base fluid compressibility, especially in deep water applications. Of course, you know, it's to say you could use it for land, you can use it for offshore, but where we see the biggest difference is in deep water operations where, you know, you go from 40 degrees Fahrenheit on the seafloor, sometimes even cooler to wells that can go down to like 300, 350 degrees Fahrenheit bottom hole temperature. So fluid is being exposed to a wide range of temperatures and pressures and that, you know, affects the fluid compressibility. So when you're trying to zoom in on a, you know, a volume of, you know, you, you get a pump that may be 97% accurate on the pump efficiency. So, you know, 5,000 barrel circulating volume, every, you know, 1% matters. So in that case, you know, you could be off by five barrels or you could be off by 50 barrels. And that could be the difference between a good cement job and a poor executed cement job. So that part of the software has really helped operators design, you know, partially the cement jobs and look at the compressibility and design the right displacements and kind of lead to just much more efficient, you know, cement displacements and being able to minimize time on the rig to having to you know, fix or alleviate issues when you've already done a poor cement job.